The wild lands to the north of Hadrian's Wall were known as a wet and windy outpost of the Roman Empire, and experts have braved similar conditions to find out more about an important fort at Burrens near Middleby, Dumfrieshire. The team of University of Glasgow archaeologists and local volunteers completed the survey as part of an initiative aimed at increasing interest in the region's past. They avoided digging by using geophysics techniques. Well, you can imagine it being quite a, a busy place. I mean, it's, it's known as uh, in, in, in the Roman, in the Latin, as Blatobulgium, the flower sack, because of its granaries. It would have been a, a place where lots of people were fed, watered, a cohort of men, maybe a thousand strong, uh, sort of within the walls of this fort. We're standing here in rain and mist. Would this be very much what the Romans would find? I think so. I, th I, think, I think Scottish weather has always been there for us to contend with. Um, <laughs> the torrential summer downpours did not deter Dr Richard Jones and his team as they discovered evidence of a likely Roman camp next to the fort. They also explored links between Burrens and Roman operations at nearby Bunswork, the distinctive <laughs> flat-topped hill. How good a site is it? It's, it's a very important Roman site. It's a very important uh, military site. Um, first big one uh, that the Romans built uh, as they moved into, into Scotland from, from Hadrian's Wall. How did it link with um, Bunswork up the hill? That's, uh, uh, that's an interesting question uh, because the fort here at Birens had quite uh, a number of phases. Um, the Flavian uh, earliest phase of uh, Roman occupation of Scotland and then a gap and then um, it was uh, re-established in the um, uh, in the Antonine period. So uh, there's probably one phase which does overlap with uh, with the lifetime of, uh, of Burns Walk. But they're separate in terms of w what their functions were. Do you think one was an annex to the other perhaps or is that...? It's, it, it's possible although uh, looking at the size of, uh, of Burns Walk, um, it, uh, it was large. It had uh, the infrastructure it needed. It, it could surely have been quite independent. What we're seeing uh, are the main ramparts to the, uh, to the fort uh, that would have been on uh, each of the four sides of the fort. And in the middle there, the, the northern entrance. And uh, then we go up the, the rampart and then up into the, the centre of the uh, um, of the fort itself. Um, in Roman times that's where all the buildings would have been, the, the barrack blocks, the granary, um, the stable blocks uh, and so on. Get to the southern end, there's a southern um, gateway and then gateways on the on the east and, uh, and west side. Annan-based historian Alec McCracken was assistant director on one of several archaeological digs carried out on the fort itself. Alec, you were in the original dig in the 1960s. What did you in find? In the 1960s, the idea was to have a, a school of archaeology for students. But there was so much new stuff discovered that it developed into a four or five year project. The main things of interest, um, there was a Roman gold coin, which was very unusual. It spent the night in the cells at uh, Ecclefechan police station. And our director, Anne Robertson, was worried in case word got out, otherwise there might have been a batch of treasure hunters in overnight. <laughs> we found a massive Roman oven, which they used to cook their food, mm -hmm. and uh, a peculiarly carved stone, we be called it the Burns Beast, whether it was a cat or a dog or something, with an inscription to the god Maponus on it, and probably the last thing of note was a, a, a previously undiscovered well, 17 feet deep. And was it photographed at the time? There were photographs taken. Uh, Dr. Robertson had a, a rolly camera with roll film, and I had a 35 millimeter taking colour slides. So we had quite a good uh, selection of things from it. Yes. And were you disappointed when it was covered up with soil again? In a way, yes, because it's uh, it was so well preserved. but. Dr. Robertson made sure nothing was damaged, it's all there still, and if anybody comes up with two or three million pounds, it can be restored to its former glory and be a real tourist attraction. The initial results of the survey were shown in Middleby Community Centre. A printout reveals what looks like Roman buildings and roads in the camp. More analysis and surveying is likely to follow.